Hello, Tallahassee. This is the Gospel on the Radio Talk Show. I am Pastor Jack King. I am your host, and I am always excited to be with you on a Sunday morning here on WTSM 97.9, your sports monster. We're on Sunday mornings from 7 to 8. We talk about dreams and visions and a church triumphant, alive and well. We talk about the church and all that he does in his glorious kingdom. This is show number 983 today. We do have a few rules. We don't talk sports, politics, doctrine, but we do always speak well of one another. And that just seems to work out very, very well. And I'm excited to have some uh, live guests in the studio again, even though we are pre-recording here since all this uh, pandemic thing has been taking place. It's been kind of just me a lot of times. But I have in the studio with me Jason Percy and Joshua Atkins, and they are pastors of a church they are forming here in Tallahassee called Refuge Christian Fellowship. Welcome to the show. Now, thank who's going to start? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Jason. Who's just Jason over here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but tell us about it. I mean, you you are the, can I use the expression lead pastor? Is that the right term? Or do we kind of co-pastors here? How are we doing this thing? Uh, well, we just uh, share. We do okay. what needs to be done. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now you are more of the the, the Bible teacher, and he's the musician. Uh, yeah, that's frequently the way it goes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we try it to is. play to our strengths. All right, but but right. Joshua, do you teach and preach too? Uh, if I need to, <laughs> in season and out of season. Okay. <laughs> so so your giftings uh, is more the the teaching of the word. Yes, uh, that's that's primarily what I focus on. And, and you have studying and teaching prior pastoral experience. Uh, I do. Okay. I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so now, how long have you been uh, at, at the church? I mean, how long has this been going on? Uh, well, uh, about about two years here. Two years. Yes, so, two years. yeah, about two years. And so you've been basically, in the past, uh, more of a uh, Bible study type fellowship type of thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have been. And, uh, and then we started doing the, that uh, on Sunday morning, essentially, and, okay. and uh, putting together some services and, and looking to... Um, Looking to encourage people to uh, follow Jesus. So, is that how we change from a Bible study to a church we do it on <laughs> right. Sunday morning? So, right. check this out. <laughs> that's that's uh, uh, that's the way. Uh, yeah. It sort of is the tradition, right? <laughs> you know. That, uh, man. S- some of the philosophy behind uh, what the church is and what the church does, I think, uh-huh. is interesting. Right. right. But uh, sometimes our focus is on Sunday morning. Sometimes it's um, trying to get more people into our little building instead of really focusing on discipling the people that are here who uh-huh. decided to follow. Jesus, And so I think that's a primary focus of what we want to do. When we get everybody together that are saying we want to follow Jesus, then we want to teach them to follow Jesus. <laughs> right, right. You know? And so but but you've focus. just leased a building. I, well, yeah. Okay, let's back up a little. <laughs> okay. That's right. So if we go back a couple years, All right. um, these guys moved back to town, and we wanted to fellowship together as we are wont. When you say these guys, you're talking about, yeah, about Jason's the, family. Jason, his wife, and his yeah. children. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so we just kind of start meeting in their home okay. on uh, on Sunday nights and and then uh, we had friends who were saying hey we'll come too and and we were meeting on Sunday nights just doing Bible study in the home well the, the real problem here is we all have like 27 kids each <laughs> so right. so we've got the kids in a back room right spilling out all over the place and, and we're trying to focus and study and uh so we decided well man we, we probably need to go find a place okay uh, to meet and so we did. So now, have you gone through the whole chartering process and, and all that type of thing, getting your uh, tax exemption and all that sort of thing? Oh uh, yeah, we have we have yeah. all of the paperwork done. Well, that, that makes you pretty feds. official We're to pretty me. Yeah. State yeah. and the feds and all yeah. of that stuff. Now, now what yeah. about the, now? You're you're independent. Would be described yeah. as independent. Um, yeah, I suppose okay. so. In that we don't have any particular affiliation with okay. any single group or church. I, I hope that we would. And one of the things Josh and I have talked a lot about is making a concerted effort toward uh, linking ourselves together with many different churches uh-huh. who are pursuing Jesus and yeah. serving our city. We want to work together. We want to serve right. together with them and bring some uh, l- to pursue unity okay. uh, um, in that way. So now, what about credentials? Are you do you carry credentials with anybody? Or uh, n- well. No, not not particularly. Okay. No, we don't. We don't have any. Uh, neither of us uh, graduated any any Bible college. Um, no. Or, and we don't. We don't have a, an affiliation from. 
right. denomination. But well, uh, you you can issue your own credentials. Right. As, as a I mean, part we're, of the we're church definitely that you, ordained. Yeah, right. Uh, right. So we we we, are, we ordained ourselves. Well, but see, that's all. <laughs> but you could do that as that's I mean, because you've gone through the whole church, process right. of making your church yes, uh, recognized by the government. Right. Right. Okay. right. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and it, that that in itself is a is a strange thing, right? Because when we're talking about the church, we're not talking about a corporate entity. Uh, we're talking yeah. about the people of God. We're yeah. talking about the people who've decided to follow Jesus. They are His church. So what makes it? He's a corporate, the head of it. What makes it a corporate entity is, is when you start taking offerings. Yeah, that's, that's right. That, that changes that's everything. Right. Anytime. Well, and here's what's interesting. Anytime about there's that. exchange of money in our exactly. culture, there has to be that's accountability right. That's to, right. to the governing authority and, and to one it, another. So. And yeah. to that's one right. another well, as well. That's true. Yeah. That, that can be helpful yeah. as well. We yeah. and. It, we, that's one of the things too like Jason said we just spend a lot of time talking it through and trying to say all right how can we do this where we don't have the appearance of evil right? sure right, absolutely and and we're still able to to use resources because we had all these people that were coming in his extended family and um and then just friends that that we teach with because we're I'm a teacher my wife's a teacher and they joined our church and they're like hey we got some money can we give it and we're like well we don't have any bank accounts or uh-huh. anything. Uh, <laughs> and that's when we said, I guess we got to, I guess we got to make that happen. Yeah. Well, the same thing about it, and this is what I'm sensing about you guys. As you said, you, you just want to follow the Lord and you're, and you feel that leading is kind of like when you read the new Testament and you read about, you know, God raised up these people, yeah. but then, then you started getting into the, uh, whole different world <laughs> when you like, say all of a sudden, right. cause, cause if you're going to lease a building, somebody's got to pay the rent yeah, that's and right. where's that that's money right. going to come from. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and yeah. so then, there's just this whole realm of accountability, and uh, the government they kind of they kind of want to just know that you're you're <laughs> doing everything uh, as it should be, and, yes, and so then like I say, you get into a whole, totally different world. Yeah, yeah. that sort of thing. And then then the next area is when you start owning property. Oh man, <laughs> and, and, I can't even imagine. And realizing that the, the Christian church existed for five hundred years. Yeah. Before they, anybody ever owned property, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, weren't they selling property and then uh, giving the money to the? <laughs> that's right. Well, that's you're talking about the, <laughs> that the fifth chapter property. of Acts, yeah, right? There we go. And an eye is a fire, fire. But, but just don't lie about but, it. Yeah, but they were just selling that. They they they're just holding the money, but they weren't holding the property. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but when when uh, when that church and I forget where the church was, but there was a church that after 500 years they bought property, mm-hmm. and that changed everything again. So, yeah. Yeah, so so because you're talking about who owns that property, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you. So, well, the members of that church. Yeah. And again, you talk about areas of accountability and responsibility, <laughs> right? And, and all of those things that you get into yeah. when you you move from just a loose association. Well, we're just going to gather together in somebody's home on Saturday night or Sunday night, exactly. have a Bible study. Yep. No big deal. No big deal. But <laughs> well, we, people want to do different things, and we got to yeah. change it up. And and then one of the things too is it it be it it's real easy to see. How people could abuse that type of stuff, Absolutely. that type of power and, right. and money, right. and so we're, we try to set it up with as much transparency sure. for our, right. for our people here, right? Um, and that's what you do, yeah. Right. That's what you do right. because you want everything to honor the Lord. Whatever you do, you yeah. want it to honor the Lord, exactly. And so when, the, when and don't it, give anybody a cause to speak ill. Absolutely. You know? So that's why you you comes in the whole area of accountability exactly. and responsibility and bank accounts and <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All those right. fun things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, but that doesn't take away from the fact that your the heart is to reach people for Christ. Yeah. And then it's weird. It feels sometimes it feels like a lot of hoops to jump through to minister to people. Um, a lot of technicalities. Sure. Uh, but you know, whatever. It, but, but there, it, but there are. Bad. I mean, if if that's what it takes to be able to exactly. do well, right? right? Yeah. And and to be able to share with people and to be able to. Um, to uh, use money in a way that is helpful, then sure. then fine. Absolutely. Right. You know, like I, I just get frustrated. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, <clears throat> sometimes I just want it to be straightforward. Uh-huh. And it, that's not how life works. Well, the thing about it, though, is that <laughs> yeah. uh, God also raises up people who have the giftings to handle that type of thing as well. Oh, as and, to, you know, oh, that's because, very true. We definitely have a guy in our, yeah. in our group. And yeah, he is God's good about that sort of thing. So good, Where, whereas so. your your gifting is music and, yeah. and praise and worship and that sort of yeah. thing, and, and uh, uh, your gifting is, is to preach and do that sort of thing. But, but you go back to the, to the book of Acts in the in the sixth chapter mm-hmm. where that issue rose up between the, the, the Jewish widows and the Grecian widows, yeah. and they said, well, look, we don't want to leave doing what we're doing here. And they picked out these yeah. seven men and said, 
said, you guys take you guys care take of that. Care of it. That's right. right. And, and, uh, and they had and they listed the qualifications. Said, well, you have to be men who are wise, full of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. and you take care of waiting on the tables. Yeah. And that's how the whole thing comes together. And you form it and you make it work. It's yeah. awesome. It's amazing how God does this. It really it is. is. It really is. So you've rented a place now. <laughs> Us knuckleheads decided in the middle of a pandemic. In the middle of a pandemic. Uh, that's right. We haven't used it, really. I, I use it as an office sometimes. So you have not been able to meet there yet. <laughs> so no, and we, we, we did a little construction yeah. on the inside. Okay. Yeah, we're wall, still working on some area, of that. But yeah. Put a couple okay. doors in. So you're still waiting to have that uh, launch service. That first one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, do, do we have a date for that? Or are we still not yet. No? Still waiting on that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, trying to watch how things go. And, and talk to our people and and yeah. see what everybody's up for and right. and uh, and go from there. We're right now still trying to work on some of the technicalities of just getting all the stuff, getting sure. equipment together, and and getting you know we had some walls put in, so there's still chairs. a little bit of work that needs to be done. Yeah, we just chairs are expensive. Dropped a lot of money on chairs yeah. that are ridiculously <laughs> nice. <laughs> these are like the cheapest in stock chairs, and they just cost so much money. Now, now, are, are these uh, the ones that are the, that are cloth and they? Yeah, the interlocking kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. We, we bought right. some of those. Right. Yeah, and, uh, yeah well, like those over there. Yeah. <laughs> you can't exactly, see them out there in return. Yeah, the, <laughs> exactly like that. And, uh, okay. So you are now at the point to where you're, you're ready to launch, yeah. but you're, are you still having your meetings at home? Well, and that's kind of how we're doing it. We have people that live in kind of different sections of town. Uh, and so we'll have two or three families meet at this house and what, two or three families meet at your house and then... And, and, yeah, that's yeah, kind of how we're idea. doing it for now. For a little while, I, I I was doing the, and I wish we had started doing that sooner, really. Sure, yeah. Um, but uh, I was trying to do like recording. I did some video things on on Facebook that are on like our Facebook page, and, and did some and YouTube that. videos and stuff like that. And I just don't. I'm sitting there. I have three young kids, you know. So I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there like in the at. Uh, two o'clock in the morning <laughs> recording something for an hour you know because uh, uh, my kids are young and loud but it's, it's uh, nice to so know that when I'm here at two o'clock in the morning which I often know, <laughs> there, there's somebody else is, is doing sure, it as well so I, I don't feel nearly as alone now. yeah well there you go but it just it, it's it's hard you know it's hard to do that because I really like communicating with people and one of the best ways for me to do that is to be able to look at them sure you know and yeah. so it's really hard I, I really have struggled with that but uh, yeah. I was also doing a, a thing because I think it's really important for us to be um, also just hearing the scriptures. And I know reading, just sitting down and reading the Bible can be a very, sometimes just difficult thing to really persevere in. So one of the things I was doing for for a while was just recording myself reading through the Bible text. And so we put that uh, online too. And that's one of the funnest really things nice. for sure. me is just reading the Did Bible. Did you get a good so, response from that? So. First people letting you know that they're um, I loved it. receiving it? Yeah. I was listening. Yeah. We were listening. Uh, yeah. We, we would do like Facebook Live, you know, and so people would be live on there. And then it, it's archived on there so people can go back to it, which sure. is what, what my hope was, so that yeah. it would be available for people to go back to uh, to be able to just listen to. If you have 30 minutes, and they're broken into like 30-minute little segments. And so sometimes we were able to go through a whole book. But like okay. we went through the book of Acts. I think it was nine, just hearing it. nine it's 30 minute segments, just reading through. So the how, how would people find it? So uh, on our Facebook page is where most of that stuff is linked to. We just, have a Facebook page. We do okay. refuge Christian <laughs> fellowship, or you can find information probably on the Instagram. We have Instagram okay. refuge CS. So somebody, if, they, if they wanted to find that on the Facebook, they just go type it in somewhere. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah, I guess. Yeah. They could just search know refuge Christian fellowship yeah. and, uh, and on YouTube as well. Okay. It's all available there, on YouTube. There's they about can search for it. There's as well. about 10 refuge there Christian fellowships in America. Okay. So ours. <laughs> so would you, would you, Distinguish yours is Tallahassee. It is Tallahassee. Usually, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do we have a website? Yeah. Uh, we do have a website. It, uh, it was Refuge TLH. It's, uh, I don't think that link works too. Uh, it doesn't, but, yeah, uh, it doesn't work. Yeah. It used to work. Well, the thing about it is that somebody may be listening to this broadcast or hear it on, on the podcast. Oh, and yeah, they, yeah. they may want to go and, and sure. hear what, yeah, you, what you've done there. So, um, 
Uh, I think you can get to our, our website at, uh, we do it through Faith Life, a company called Faith Life. Okay. Um, but it's uh, refugetlh.faithlifesites.com. Hmm. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to like simplify it and redirect from the refuge. Refugetlh.com. Tlh. So, so are you the, uh, the so, tech guy in your church too? I am, unfortunately, for everyone that has to do anything right now. <laughs> uh, I, I, I am oh, just right now as we, sort yeah. of a temporary thing. Yeah. I'm not We put it out to techie, everybody the church been like hey does anybody want to be like our our online person right, right. and everybody was like no i've had at least, I, I, <laughs> I've had right. at least a hundred of those yeah. over the, over yeah, the years right. and uh, they just come and go for some reason yeah. or another yeah. i don't know what happens they just it's right. just like they just fall off the universe it seems so easy uh <laughs> yeah maybe that's it maybe everybody's like oh it's easy i can click yeah some buttons. but somehow or another it's not i don't know yeah. just there, there's a tedium to keeping up to it right yeah. you know so and and doing something and that is that's what really, keeps people you know, from so. they do it for a while then they just get tired of it right. yeah. well that makes sense and I, sure. unfortunately I'm just not a computer person I mean I do know how to check the email yeah because after my That's son uh, resigned as my associate then I had to learn how to do that because I'd yeah. always he'd, he'd always do it for me yeah and he'd just tell me he says so oh, daddy if somebody wants you to know about this and he just he'd email him back and it worked out great <laughs> <laughs> thank you so that wouldn't work yeah. great <laughs> <laughs> and one of the last things one of those yeah the last the last thing he did was, was sit me down and say, okay, daddy, you need to learn how to do this. Yeah. And, so, and, I've, and I've learned other things along the way, but there's still a lot to be learned yeah. about those type of things. And, and of course, uh, when you get bigger as a church, then you hire a secretary. Well, and my they, thought you know, is that. we should just stay small. Uh-huh. Um, well, then you might want to get, learn more yourself. <laughs> That's right. I have to learn <laughs> keep, more. Let's stay, let's yeah, keep so... Keep yeah, uh, we we like uh, like the idea of saying let's um let's do well in teaching people and equipping them and then sending them out to okay. to to do other things that are the same. Absolutely. You know? What's been really nice is is we know everybody in the church, and we're able to to take care of each other. Uh-huh. Like it, when we've got rough stuff going on, we've got a family that lives right down the road, and and we could call them anytime, and they can just. They'll go to Publix for us, you know, something like that. Sure. Or sure. they'll watch our kids for us. We'll watch their kids, stuff like that. And, and that's, it's really nice to be able to kind of care for each other. It is. And that's what a church family is all about. Right. And that's, yeah. one, that's one of the reasons why you want people to be involved in a church. Absolutely. Because it's, it's a family. It's, right. it's more than just people that you just know. It, it really does become a family. Yes. And I think even in a, in a large church, most of the large churches, they operate on the system of small groups. Small groups, home groups. And so yeah. basically, you've got a small church. Church and a big church inside a big church, <laughs> and that's kind of. Now I've never really been involved of a big church, but this is what I've yeah. been told. Right. And, and so, because what I have heard that your sphere of influence and people that you can really know is about fifty people. Right. That you can that really right. have a a really a close relationship with it all. Yeah. And just to put, just a whole reality of life and time and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And so, fifty people in a grouping in a small in a bigger church sure. would be about right. And uh, and then they're the ones that, like you talked about, you call on them, or they you do things for one another, you Absolutely. babysit for one another, yeah, and all that sort of thing. That, Real that's, practical stuff, but yeah. also spiritual fellowship there. But too. that's family, yeah, it's that's family, family. That's exactly family right. in a church setting. Well, here's what's interesting: there's my upbringing. My and this is a little personal, but I won't say any names. But my family, what before I was born, they were kind of burned by a church, apparently, okay. and so I grew up being told, uh, you know church is just a place where people go to see each other it's just like a social club and some people feel that way yeah and 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 some churches like that (laughs) okay well maybe um since i have to be here every sunday i won't i won't go uh, go yeah (laughs) sure um yeah i just remember my dad saying that's just a country club you know you Uh can follow the lord without going to a church and then so that's kind of what i thought you know and then you know how when you're a teenager you rebel against your parents so I kind of rebelled and started going to church. Um, so where other people would re- would rebel and stop and going to church, church. <laughs> you yeah. did it the other way. I rebelled and started going. Um, so I keep trying to get my dad to show up. Uh-huh. Uh, maybe he will someday. He will. Yeah, he yeah. will. Um, but man, it, it, what a difference to to actually be with people and 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 uh, and actually have people that care for you and people that you can care for because I think that's a kind sure. of a big deal. Now, how old were you when this happened? When you, as when you I started you re- going yeah, when you started going. I was about 17. 17. Yeah. So before that, you you go every now and then? No, I would only go if I had a friend in the neighborhood that would invite me 
uh, and take me. So it would okay. be just for Easter usually, or, or you know, sometimes okay. Christmas. But we would listen to like Bible teaching tapes okay. uh, in, at home. But again, not very often. Okay, like they would just be in the. In so, the so office. basically, at a certain age in your life, how were you when your parents, as you say, got hurt in a church and stopped going? Do you remember? That? Oh no, it was before I was born. Before you were born. Before I was so born. So you didn't have any no. church influence at all. I didn't grow up in church at all. Isn't that amazing? Uh, very, very uh, secular lifestyle. Even. Right, and so and that that kind of started to wear on me as I grew up and, and we always were, were taught you know the Bible is true and, and God is real and you need to know this Bible and and when then when I would read it when I got older uh, you know 15, 16 and start to realize well wait a minute you're supposed to act different too and then I I would notice that um, I had you know of course I had some very faithful people in my family but then I had other people that I didn't see any difference Okay, and I didn't see any difference in myself really and then that's when the Lord's like, all right, you need to do something. So the Holy Spirit was at work. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So now was was there a friend that you knew that said, hey, come to my church? Yeah, it was a mutual friend of ours in high school. Okay. Um, and we went to, it's not there anymore, but uh, Parkway Baptist. Parkway, Baptist. sure. Yeah, sure. Right. <laughs> and um, and J- Jason and I were friends at that time, okay. honestly. Yeah. It was so, bo- so both of you went to Parkway for a while. Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember mm-hmm. going a few times out there. They had a yeah, youth, they had a youth thing. thing. Yeah, and um, we, we went a few times out mm-hmm. there. Did you know a guy by the name of Dennis Hall? Yeah, well, yeah, he was the youth leader. Yeah, yeah he, he, was, he was my neighbor. He lived right across the road no from way. Yeah. yeah, he lived way out Buck <laughs> yeah. Lake, maybe? Did he live out Buck Well, Lake, he, he, no, he actually, he, he lived out on the parkway. On the parkway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was Yeah, like he, but yeah. and then, then they yeah. moved on to, on to another place on the parkway, and I won't reveal where he lived. Yeah, well, sure, yeah. <laughs> and, they, and they still live there. But, Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, he... He ended up going to Bible college when he was in his what, 40s. That's awesome. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, so this when we were there, it was 90, 97, 98 ish, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe right. 99. That's about right, yeah. And, um, and I actually got baptized there, which was interesting. Sure. And, but we only went to the youth group, uh-huh. really. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah, that, that's that's yeah, very yeah, interesting. Yeah, well, uh, like I say, he he was uh, he just felt God to call him to the ministry, so he went over to Graceville. He'd drive back and forth to, to go to Bible college, but I yeah, but I knew awesome. he was involved in church. I knew he was involved yeah. in youth. And, and interesting enough, his wife and my wife had the same birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Easy to remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing about it is that God brought you there, and God used that youth ministry. Definitely. So how long oh, did that? Huge, yeah. How long did y'all stay there? Uh, I mean, that was probably about <clears throat> two years, yeah. Uh, but it was a pretty impactful two years. Sure. But uh, just think about how important that is. Right. It is. Uh, now, Jason, you grew up in church, or I did. Yeah, I grew up. Uh, I grew up going to Hayden Road Assembly of God. Okay. Yeah. All right. But uh, somehow Until another I was about twelve, really, and then my my mom stopped going. Okay. And so I would just ride around with whoever I could to find a ride and. <laughs> And uh, go, and uh, I remember uh, that was only, I guess, when we went, but uh, I remember um, going to a couple of places that were uh, very formal. I wasn't really used to that, uh, having grown up uh, going to an assemblies church, uh-huh. uh, but most of my family went to uh, went to Hayden Road. Uh, most okay. of my mom's family lived in town, and then um, when we were in, yeah, we had some friends, like, we went to Parkway, so we went out to Parkway, and... Uh, goodness, I, I can't even remember all the places <laughs> we, uh, but, we but ended to, up going to. But the real you know, so. beautiful thing about this is that you both were young men. Yeah. Where other young men, their minds might have been on things totally different. Wow. You all were looking for a place to go <laughs> to, to, to learn about the Lord. Now, to be fair, <laughs> our minds were definitely on other things as well. Uh, yeah. But the Lord sure, was definitely sure. at work. Yeah. Like, I mean, that, yeah. That's for sure. I, uh, we, I remember. Well, and we were weirdos, too. Yeah. Yeah, we were a little uh, were weird. Um, we still are. Still are. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah. so I remember I was, uh, I, I remember a, a defining or definite time when I, at, at Hayden Road, when I was, I think I was about 11, when I really was like, this is, I, I really believe the Lord yes. and I want to be saved. And Wow. And then a year later, I was uh, baptized. Hayden Road didn't have a baptistry, so we went to uh, Evangel. 
okay. uh, assembly, and I was baptized over there uh, huh. when I was twelve. And I remember being being like a sixth grader and carrying my giant King James Version Bible with me <laughs> to school in my back. I love that. Know, I love that. I started reading in Genesis, and I didn't understand a word of what uh, I was right, reading. Right, you know, right. But uh, but God has brought so many of those things to my mind right. you know, as I've uh, grown and everything. But uh, and, and I went through some pretty hard family things and was not doing well in school and in high school and uh, my grandfather died and some other issues with friends and <laughs> and and family and um and i got to a place where i wasn't doing anything except going to uh school every day just reading my bible in every class uh, and uh, of course not you don't any classwork you don't, you don't make good grades josh is a teacher so yeah. and, and you, you, all, and you all good grades you all knew every, each other so we, did, yeah. we did probably about 97 we were 16 and, and you were 15. friends you were, you were friends, friends at that point yeah, yeah. okay yeah we met in driver's ed we met in driver's ed on the hill at lincoln that's right. Okay. So now, uh, you said around 17 when you started going to Parkway. Yeah, it was about the same time, yeah. Okay. So we were friends, and we were we were, we were pretty worldly. Even though like all the stuff was in the back there, we, we were friends with kids that were just normal kids. Sure. And, um, and we were joining along with them. But then, you know, we had this one friend that, that was really into the Bible, and... Um, and, and Christian music and stuff, but he was into that underground Christian music, you know, like the the the, the heavy rock Christian music, and that's what the type of stuff we like, like 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 punk rock and hardcore. Okay, I don't know. okay. So anyway, Is that like Petr Petrus, or Petr. That's like the '80s metal version, and okay. then like update it for like the the '90s. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, you're you're thinking kind of right, and then um, he was like, you know, like there's Christian versions of this stuff, and and we were like, oh yeah, you know, well we both we're both believers. And that's that also helped us kind of take it seriously because uh-huh. we had an ally basically. Right. Um, but, yeah. J- but Jason, when you got baptized, you said at eleven. Yeah, you were eleven. I mean, I think I was about twelve. I mean, had you had a, a true conversion experience? I, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Um, but but even after that, there were still some times of struggle. Oh uh, yeah, definitely were. Uh, me me learning to walk with the Lord. Sure. Right. Learning to grow. Learning to understand what it looks like to follow Jesus. But, right. Um, but. Uh, I know that I had I wanted to, yeah. right? I wanted to do the things that he wanted me to do, even though I found uh, sort of that Romans seven thing frequently. You know, like the things that I I, I don't want to do, I do, and the things that I I don't want to do. Uh, oh, wretched uh, man know, that I am! And it's like um, <laughs> f- finding that reality, but then also rejoicing. You know, who will deliver me from this body of death? I yeah. thank my God through Christ Jesus, who has delivered us. You know, and so, I'm not the interviewer, so. but but do you feel like you had any? like role models during that time period like middle schoolish where you had someone you could be like you know that's a I w- I'm gonna follow like they follow no yeah. right I think that I was surrounded by people who who didn't care about anything who didn't know anything spiritual and didn't care about anything spiritual and that had a heavy a big influence but you were still on going the way to, that i lived you're still going to church though i i still was anytime that i that i could find a right. ride to go now, now somewhere along that line uh yeah. hayden's hayden road assembly uh kind of disbanded it's they, they kind of did but they didn't yeah. They, they, yeah and i think that was that was that was i think several years later i think that was down the road okay uh, that okay. they did because i i I think that was, a but but early. but you made the transition over to Parkway Baptist. Is this mm-hmm. is this after you met Joshua? And, and yeah. I think so because uh, the think same friend I was fifteen. Us. I think when we met, yeah. Because um, at seventeen, yeah, you're still in high school, but you're just about out. Yeah, I was uh, getting there. Yeah, senior year. And so 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 you. This is all new to you. Uh, at, at this yeah, point, pretty going much. over to Parkway Baptist with a friend. Oh yeah, and you're you're hearing everything. Yeah, and, and we're, we're and I, I I read the Bible and listened to doctrine tapes and stuff okay. like that. Okay. Um, but I'd never really experienced that. You go to church and we sit there for this, and then we stand up for this, and then and then we all shake hands. Uh-huh. You know that that was weird to me. Right, I didn't understand it. But uh, did did you talk to Jason about all of this? Because he he oh he, he knew he, we never talked about that stuff. Really? Yeah, no. We were we you know Jesus says you're the sheep without a shepherd. Yeah, well we, that was us like for sure. <laughs> I think so we were sheep without a shepherd. Yeah, in, in the sense that we didn't have a, a, a like you said like a direct like role model. Uh, we per- had the Bible person here. You know, we had the scriptures and and I believe the Holy Spirit who was leading us. Yeah, um, but it, um, true. Yeah. And, but what's the thing about it is it God used it right and, yeah uh, 
and, and somewhere along the line, you yeah. both ended up at Calvary Chapel. How did that happen? Yeah. Um, the cool kids went there. Uh, yeah, some of the first. kids that were a part of the that group of friends, uh, some school. of them, um, some of them went to Calvary, like to the youth group there. And I remember yeah. visiting one night, and it was during that season when I had a lot going on in my life, and and I was looking for something serious, and it wasn't very serious uh, <laughs> at that particular time, you know. And, and that's all maybe very judgmental of me, but it just didn't <laughs> seem very serious. Um, uh, but I met somebody in the parking lot that night who was older than me this was on a wednesday night he was older than me by several years and uh and he uh, had a skateboard with him and that was a big part of my life was skateboarding okay. uh so uh, he had and, a skateboard and, and with him and, to tell about it. and uh, yeah that's right <laughs> he's still good at it too. <laughs> uh, barely um no, but he... uh so uh so i met him in the parking lot and we agreed to go skating and he was he was in college here at florida state okay. uh, so he went to like the the big service, the big kid service big at church, kid. you know, the not to the youth service. group, you know. So we were like, okay, I, I was like, okay, I'm, I mean, I, I think I was um, maybe 17 then. By that time, I'm a little bit younger than Josh is. Um, but um, so I was like, okay, well, if he goes, then I'm going to go there. And I remember sitting down and uh, we got there late because we're kids. And so we got there late and, and we uh, went to like the overflow room and it was a Wednesday night that night. And I remember sitting there and Kent uh, Nottingham pastor over there was, uh, I think they were in Deuteronomy. I don't even remember now, but I think it was Deuteronomy. And Sounds I remember right. sitting there and he just was reading through the text and he just was explaining what was happening and what was going on and how this applies to what to the gospel and to our lives. And I remember sitting there thinking, I have never heard anybody yeah, just that was explain the Bible yeah. to me like this. And, oh. and there was so much health and so much yeah. life in that. And, and from that moment on, I was like, I just need more of this. Yeah, I need yeah. more of the scriptures. I need more of just hearing the word of God. And so yeah, that's, that's uh, a, at that point on, I was just stuck. I was committed. That's a legacy of Chuck Smith. It yeah, really absolutely. is. The founder of, yeah, of, of, yeah, of, very of much Calvary so. Chapel. And well, I used yeah. to listen to him on the radio all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Just and when we, um, later on, when we kind of got a little more serious, like they started doing Bible classes out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I took a Romans class. And... That blew me away. I, uh -huh. to, 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 because the teacher of the class, it was just, it was only like five or six of us in there. Um, and it was just for about 10 weeks. But we went through the whole thing. And it turns out, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but the Bible, uh, books of the Bible reference other books of the Bible. Did you guys know that? It's <laughs> amazing, isn't it? And it's it all just fits together. Yeah. It's you guys so know beautiful. That? You know, right. these 66 <laughs> books are all right. so incredibly intertwined it with the scarlet I'd, cord. I'd, you know? It blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. no, literally, I guess. I and and especially for you, because yeah. you, you didn't have the background. Sure. I mean, I would just open yeah. it when I was a little kid or, you know, like a teenager and stuff. I would just open it and read, okay, let's read Psalms. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. Yeah, I'd, like a, like a kid like me that, that grew up in church all my life and yeah. had Sunday school and was taught the Bible stories right. and, and all that sort of thing. But for you to come in at, at age of 17 yeah. and just you're starting at that point. Right. And I have to be sensitive to that as a pastor yeah. because I have people from time to time that are, that are coming to our church and they're, they're, they get saved. You know, and I have to realize that they're, they're not up to speed in no. a lot of these things. Right. And, well, and, and I get up and I preach a sermon and I realize they don't have any clue what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. And uh, that's so, right. I, so I, so I'm a teacher, a school teacher, um, and I, I, I teach middle school. And so we're in there, you know, kids are 11 to 14 ish. And I think about that too. Am I the only Christian that these people know that mm -hmm. these kids know or, sure. or someone who's actually trying to, um, trying to do the right thing, right. you know, um, I'm, if they may be like I was, uh, it, when when I was little, yeah. Um, well, I remember a lady in my church that that goes to our church now, and she was totally unchurched when she came into our church. And yeah. she said she said she remembers the first sermon mm -hmm. when she came to our church. I heard the first sermon, and she was telling me about it. She says. I had no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> but see, for me, who's been pastoring probably at that time, probably at least 30 years, yeah. the same people, more of a traditional church where, ever, where I know that a lot of people sitting out there know more about the Bible than I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so you, you approach it a lot of times from that perspective as a yeah. pastor. Well, they, they know these things, but a lot of times they don't. Sure. That's exactly And right. so you, so we, we have to be sensitive to that type of thing. To, yeah. To, to be able to relate things in ways. Sometimes you have to go back and just get real elementary. Yeah. It's and, important uh, to know your audience. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Gospel on the Radio Talk 
show. For those of you who are tuned in, uh, I've got a couple of young men here in the studio with me, Jason Percy and Joshua Atkins. They're forming a church here. <laughs> and uh, they're kind of, they've been doing a Bible study for a while, but the church is kind of new and they're, they're just getting it going. And then the COVID hit and then uh, they haven't even been able to have a service yet, but they did lease a place where they can pay rent. That's, get, right. that's, that's very right. important. That's <laughs> they, right. We can, we can pay money and not use the there building. You go. We're being very uh, faithful for, in that rent. For public payment. services. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, if you like my style of music, and I know that not everybody does, you can join me every Saturday night for the full hour of Southern Gospel music. It's called the Saturday Night Gospel Sing with Pastor Jack King. It airs on 94.1 on your radio dial, 7 o'clock. And uh, well, I'll just say this. I have a good time doing the show. I really do. I listen to the music and I enjoy it and I, it inspires me and I make comments in between. And I've been doing that show almost six years now. And th- that, that amazes me because that it seemed like it was just yesterday that I started that. But anyway, invite you to join me there. Also, on uh, Monday through Friday on 94.1, I do a show called the uh, Gospel on the Radio Broadcast. It's really not a show. It's a daily teaching. It's a teaching of the Word of God, but not just preach. Preach or teach, however you want to call it. And you can join me for that as well, 11 o'clock. And you can also find this show which is all the talk shows and the daily broadcast on the podcast. And all you have to do is type in Pastor Jack King Tallahassee and they'll come up and there's a whole bunch of gospel teachings there for you and a whole bunch of talk shows that you can listen to. If you're going on a vacation, just plug it in. You'll enjoy it. And uh, I'm also the pastor of Freedom Road Christian Ministry, 720 Capital Circle Northeast. We start 1105 on Sunday mornings. Check us out on the web, frcm.us. We are between Easterwood Drive and Park Avenue. So if you're heading toward Park Avenue, look for us on the right-hand side, and we will have signs out there on Sunday morning where you can find us. <laughs> and, uh, come and join us. We love having visitors at Freedom Road Christian Ministry. And let's see what else I've got to tell you here. That pretty much covers all of that. I was thinking about something that I have here in the studio with me. Um, Jason Percy and Joshua Atkins, they are forming a, a church or ministry. It's called Refuge Christian Fellowship. And I so enjoyed just our conversation, both since we started on the air here and before we spent about an hour That's just right. talking, getting to know one another. And what it reminded me of, I was the uh, regional youth director for the Southeast region of the Open Bible Churches for almost 30 years. Now, keep in mind, when I started that position, I was about 27 years old. 30 years later, I'm still in the position. All the guys who started with me, they're long gone. I got young people sitting in the room with me now. <laughs> and they're all going, what is that old man doing in here? <laughs> and they really did. But I'm still working with youth, and I, and I love young people, and, and uh, I have a great relationship with them. But one day... One day, uh, they're all sitting there, and, and like I say, everybody has shifted now. All the young men that's in the room, they're all young men. i am gotten older now, and I've been pastoring at that time 30, maybe 30 years. Yeah. And they were talking about when they, got, when they were moving out of their youth ministry roles, the churches had become pastors. And that conversation went on for about an hour in that room. And I just sat there silent, didn't say a thing. And finally, somebody realized that I was in the room, and they said, Pastor King, this is just an old hat to you, isn't it? I said, yeah, but I've loved every minute of it, Uh, (laughs) because I'm seeing young men excited about doing what I've been doing all these years, (laughs) and to know... That you know, God's going to take me off the scene here yeah. for too long, <laughs> and I'm not I'm not in a hurry. But you know, oh, it's going right. to happen. <laughs> and to know that there are young men hmm. who are excited about learning the word, teaching the word of God, uh, the, you'll be there at the bedsides. You know, I mean, you, <laughs> that's all part of pastoring. You yeah, know, you're yeah. there beside yeah. on the bedside when the things are people come to the end of their lives, or you'll be the yeah. one that gets to dedicate the babies and, and all the exciting things that has to do with ministry. Right. And you'll also be the ones that'll be there trying to save that marriage. Yeah. But it's great to know that God's <laughs> raising people up yeah. to, 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 to fill these roles such as this. Pastoring has great joy and also has a lot of sorrow. <laughs> and uh, you're, you're, you're hurt. And unfortunately, and my wife and I talk about this, you, you become guarded. 
mm-hmm. and, and you become very protective of your family. Mm-hmm. And, uh, now, God has blessed us. We, we had uh, four biological children, then we have another young lady, we call her our spiritual daughter. So she didn't grow up in our home as pastors, but my children did. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really know how much it affected them until they got older and began to tell me. You feel like you're living in a fishbowl. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> as, as a PK. Yeah. As, as, as children. Yeah. But God honored us, and they've all turned out pretty good. <laughs> but at the same, same time, at times we wouldn't expose them to everything right. that goes on in the church. So, like a, so I'm, I'm just excited. I just, I've yeah. just enjoyed the conversation, getting to know you guys and hearing here. Here your heart for the things of God. And God's brought you here to Tallahassee to, to build this <laughs> ministry. Yeah. And uh, I'll just tell you this. I, if you need to pick my brain anytime, call me. <laughs> and, uh, sure. And we'll get you back on the show in about a year. We'll see. Yeah, how okay. <laughs> well, one of the things that the, be good. the Lord's been showing both of us is we've got, I mean, the body of Christ is the body of Christ, Amen. you know, and it's, and it's everywhere. And uh, hmm. how many yeah. people, I don't know, it just seems like we're always meeting people that are involved in some other fellowship somewhere, and good things are happening there. Yeah. Uh, and people are faithful over there, and they're you know, yeah. it's nice to see. And see the other thing too. This, like I said, I've been pastoring here in Tallahassee. we we just celebrated forty years last year. So forty years we've been here at the church. Wow, and when I came here in nineteen seventy nine, all the pastors who were pastoring churches around here, they're all gone. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I'm still here. Yeah. yeah. And so as far as I know, I don't know of anybody that's been in their church longer in Tallahassee than I have. Hmm. But at the same time. And instead of seeing these guys that I knew, I've seen you guys. Yeah, you know who who, who you're here. You're going to start church. Yeah, you're going to be reaching people because in this city we need the light. Yeah, you know. I mean, God said uh, that we're like supposed to be a city on the hill. Yeah, that with, and, and don't cover our lights to to where it won't be seen. But we need young people like you guys. It's, it's excited. And then you're going to touch people. And see, we're in the capital city of Florida right That's here. That's right. And, and Florida is a very uh, notice state. <laughs> you, may, you may realize right. that. Yeah, we're in the news a bit. It tends to be. <laughs> we tend to be. Yeah. And so here, as pastors, to be people of influence, even among those who are oh. on the, the highest hill in Tallahassee. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a little... That's, it's a little daunting. That's a little scary to think about. It better it better not just be me. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, well, the thing is, it is the it, Lord. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but but like I say, we're we're here in in, in a, the capital city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think in a lot of ways the, the ministry is a little harder. And I've had other pastors tell me the same thing that uh, it's a little huh. different being here. Is that right? But God's called you here, and yeah, God right, yeah. brought you back from Brunswick. That's right, Brunswick, Georgia. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So you, <laughs> uh, and I'm I'm looking at my clock here, and I'm going to have to fast forward the story a little bit because <laughs> as it's been unfolding, yeah. The two of you, you transcended or uh, over from uh, where you're going to Parkway Baptist. Now you were at Calvary Chapel. Yeah. And you're you're there. You're you're growing. Mm-hmm. You must have gotten married. I'm talking about Jason. You must have gotten married when you were about 15. Didn't you? No, I was. Because you were uh, talking. You were talking. <laughs> That's about right. so he's going all, all to Brunswick. All our friends right. thought we were all our friends thought we were crazy yeah. too. Yeah, how so, old were you when you uh, got married? My wife and I were nineteen. Nineteen, uh, both of you got married. We both were nineteen and uh, both had the support and blessing of our family and our yeah, church family, and and uh, really, really, it's been incredible. And we felt like you know what, uh, this is what we believe the Lord wants us to do, and and if um, if we're willing to uh, be obedient to Him and love each other, then. Let's do it. And of course, your wife was a believer. Yeah, Had she always strong. been a believer? Did... Uh, she grew up going to Thomas Road Baptist Church, and okay. is from her earliest memories are uh, uh, revolve around her uh, really hearing the things of the Lord and and uh, and even believing Him. Okay, and uh, that's, that's somewhat different for me, even though I grew up hearing some of those things. I remember a particular time when I when I said, "This is this is something that I, I know I need to uh, to lay my trust in uh-huh. is Him." Sure. Now, now, where did y'all meet? Uh, we met through some friends. Actually, the first time my wife and I really hung out, we both went to school at Lincoln. She's a year older than me in school. She's three months older than me. She okay. probably doesn't like me saying that too much. But anyways, <laughs> uh, so uh, <laughs> I like to remind her of it every now and then. Uh, Don't do but that. Uh, Right. But we... Um, 
Uh, the first time we actually spent time together was uh, just randomly we uh, went to like a, a Hallelujah Harvest thing at a church that some friends we we went on, eventually ended up a bunch of us went out to uh, uh, what was the Methodist church way out Chairs United Chairs Methodist. United Methodist we went to the youth yeah. group out there for a while um, Pastor Divine Reverend Divine mm-hmm. okay yeah. and then uh, and then uh, there was another church called um, Agape mm-hmm. yeah and uh, that was here for a while yeah. and. And um, and they, uh, my wife and I, just uh, we kind of met through some friends, okay. at, uh, and, and then we said, "Hey, let's go hang out." And we went and to the Hallelujah Harvest thing, and and, and so and, then uh, you, you both of you had graduated from high school, I assume, mm-hmm. and then you decided, "Well, let's get married." Uh, well, pretty much. We at that point, she had joined me going to Calvary, and uh, we were taking some Bible college classes they yeah. were offering there. And we actually happened to be going through one through the Book of Ephesians and going through some of the marriage portions that Paul talks about right. uh, marriage there in Ephesians five. And and, uh, and then we just said, "Hey, let's um, let's get married." And, and both families were, were okay with this. Yeah. Uh, they absolutely were. I mean, it, it really was was really incredible when you look back on it you know yeah. when, when everything's happening it's all very whirlwind you know and all sure. of that but uh, looking back on it, it it really is incredible the way that uh, uh, the support that we had um, from and, our and friends and, and, and how family, long has it been now know? so uh, this past February we celebrate our 18th anniversary 18th years. Years. So, yeah. and they only knew each other for about nine months before is that right yeah and, and then you, no that's not true oh come on we, and we then knew you go each other to... for about four months before we got engaged <laughs> and then it was Ten months, <laughs> and, then, and then you go off to to Brunswick, Georgia. To, yes, to, uh, and then about a year and a half later, uh, during our I second you, year I, of marriage, I, I bet I her guess. parents were thrilled about that. I, mean, I, <laughs> I, I think that her parents are incredibly supportive. They I, really were. I, yeah. I know yeah. that it was very hard on my wife, uh-huh. and I didn't understand that as a. Right. 20 year old but, uh, but now you, you told know, us before so. we went on there you were in Bainbridge or, now Bracey I keep wanting to say that yeah me too I, I, when, I, when you first said I, I, I'm thinking he's saying Bainbridge, Bainbridge but he was Brunswick Georgia Brunswick and you were there how many years uh, we were there for about 15 years 15 like years 15 years working with the ministry there mm-hmm. and all of this is right out of high school you're, you're learning I mean you're, you you do it the hard way <laughs> uh, <it's>, uh, <laughs> It is the hard thing, yes. <laughs> uh, but you know, there's nothing like, uh, there really is nothing like uh, just going and stepping out. And, and uh, we were confident that uh, it's the direction the Lord was leading us in. As we prayed and we sought counsel from friend, we sought friends and, and family, we sought counsel from from um, from my pastor, from our pastor, and, and others in the church. And, and there was great, great witness and testimony to it. And it's hard because sometimes there's an assumption of uh, what sort of the idea of the prosperity gospel even in ministry that if God has really called you to something then it's going to be big or it's going to explode or whatever uh, especially for me maybe as a 20 year old but uh, it wasn't like that and um, God I know that God was calling me to be faithful sure. which is really what sure. the, the the only thing right. really is about being faithful um, God has called us to be faithful to him regardless of what what circumstances happen uh, related to that so those are important lessons that uh, I uh, needed to learn and yeah. and for me learning a lot of that was maybe learning it the hard way and just but, walking through but, but it but you said it earlier in the broadcast when you said that that we we need to learn to disciple the ones that we have exactly mm-hmm. and yeah. and that to me that reminds me of the of the the parable of the one yeah you know, about Jesus he left the 99 absolutely. and he went after the one because mm-hmm. he saw the value in the one absolutely but you're you're right unfortunately so we we get our mindsets into the, the what is success yeah. and unfortunately and I think this is, is unfortunate as, a, is. as a minister we often f- account success how we believe that other people view success and that has to do with how many people did you have sitting in the pews on Sunday morning yeah. and that is how success is often measured for yeah. a pastor and that's, that's, right. that's very unfortunate it is because um, pastoring is loving people yeah and then when they when they hurt you you love them some more <laughs> that's right <laughs> and when that's you got so 2,000 people all hurting you you gotta love all 2,000 <laughs> that's all. right that's right yeah because that's, that's the very pattern that Jesus set for us yeah and this is what he demonstrated to us yeah when he said father forgive them for they know not what they do absolutely I mean this whole thing about well about my feelings <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> it's it's not about my feelings. Nope. Yeah. It's about my faithfulness. Yeah. 
But sometimes we, the human side wants to, wants to be in here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, I want to. I want to feel like I've done something that is valuable and worthwhile. And uh, if we've been taught our whole lives. Uh, what that looks like is things are bigger or you have more money or more people. Uh, and even I go to conferences, regional conferences or, or national conferences. And it's like, sometimes the conversation always would, or not always, but frequently could revolve around with any new person you meet, how many people are coming and, and mm, you know, sure. what, what do you Absolutely. have a new building thing going yeah. on and all of this. And, and it just got tiring yeah. to hear it because none of it was happening for me. Yeah. And, and, and that was know. very frustrating. Yeah. Um, but but to be able to learn that lesson and realize that it's not up to me to do that stuff anyways. Yeah. It's n- none of that is my responsibility. My responsibility is to be faithful to the Lord and to do the thing that He's told me to do. What He's told you to do. Yeah. That's right. What He's what He has spoken to you. Exactly. Uh, uh, the, the, we have a story that is related often in, in the open Bible churches, which is the organization I'm a part of, about some missionaries that went to India before World War II. Yeah. And left there because of the war, hmm. discouraged and felt like they were complete failures. And they died believing that they had failed in India. Years later, one of our men, pastors, was just traveling through India and he saw an open Bible church. <laughs> and he said, uh, I just wonder if there's any relation. Yeah. Turned out that there was over 500 open Bible churches in India directly related to those people yeah. who died thinking they had failed in ministry. Right. Mm. And unfortunately, that story is often repeated because we see we don't think about the seed. <laughs> what did Jesus say? He said, go sow the seed. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to fall on all kinds of type of ground. <laughs> sure. And it does. <laughs> but we don't always know That's exactly true. how it all goes. Yeah. But well, God gives you our responsibility <laughs> is, is to be, yeah. be thankful. So if, if our heart is toward the one, yeah. you know, uh, in other words, if 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 I if I'm called to drive a thousand miles to go hold a meeting and the only person that shows up is one, I'm going to preach to that one just yeah. like my you know, <laughs> like a house on fire. One person is there, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah, because we, I have a friend in um who lives in uh, Uganda, and uh, he's been doing ministry over in, in uh, East Africa for a number of years now, for yeah. over a decade now. Isaac Wooten, and uh, he's a wonderful uh, brother. He loves the Lord, and and I'm so challenged by him because every time he comes back to the states to visit, he's always like, "Jason, it's really hard over here." <laughs> and I'm like, "What do you mean? Yeah. Like, it, like it's hard here in America, you know?" Yeah. And I'm like, I, "I feel our perspective is always, oh, it's really bad or really hard somewhere else, you know." And Isaac is like, "It's just." It's different, yeah. you know. It's very different uh, to to do ministry here. And one a book that I read uh, recently, and I've encouraged several people to read it. That was really helpful to me in gaining some perspective around success in ministry. Is a book called "Liberating Ministry from the Success Syndrome." It was written by R. Kent Hughes, who was uh, he has a couple Bible commentaries, pretty significant ones uh, that a lot of people use. I think the Preaching the Word Bible Commentary series is one that uh, that he does. But he and his wife wrote this book called "Liberating." ministry from the success syndrome and it's just wonderful it really is a wonderful reminder to focus on faithfulness amen okay let's do this because we got about uh, a minute 53 we got to pray before we go here today. yeah we do today. so website e-facebook people want to reach you how do they do it yeah uh, yeah, you can search on Facebook for Refuge Christian Fellowship okay. Tallahassee, and uh, there's a link on there to our other site as well. It should be refugetlh.faithlifesites.com. Now, are you, and, uh, you can go that Are you open to people coming to your Bible studies in the homes at this point, or are, you, are we going to wait until we get in the building? I think we'll wait until we get in the building, okay. but I mean, yeah. But, but they, can, contact. they can contact. I, I, I would say yeah, reach, reach out, and, reach and out. we'll see how we can work go. things out, because uh, obviously— we have this great message that Jesus raises the dead, right? There you go. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he, he, he has been raised from the dead, and our hope yeah. extends beyond it's what we see with our eyes. You know, resurrection so that's really power. important. Yeah. Resurrection power. Um, Hallelujah. We want to be faithful to that. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to pray. Let's Father, see. I thank you for these brethren. I thank you, Lord, that you have brought them here to be a part of this uh, broadcast today. And Lord, you know all about who's, who's heard this message today, both here on 97.9 and also on the podcast, Lord. Lord, you move through people's hearts. And Father God, we just pray your blessings upon them as they reach out and they endeavor to serve you yeah. in this new church launch. And Father, help them in all the things that they do. And we look to you. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. 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 Gentlemen, it's been great Amen. to have you on the show. Thanks. Thank you. So we'll, yeah, we'll, thank we'll, you so we'll be much. looking to have you back in about a year and we'll give us a good report. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. <laughs> All right. And until next Sunday morning, may the Lord bless you.